I buy faulty electronic items, attempt to fix them and sell them for a profit. This right here is Sally's spectacular spreadsheet where we log said information. This is episode number eight, season two of the series Profit or Loss. And boy, do I have some updates for you. First things first, the estimated profit column that you can see here now includes minusing the postage, which is what net profit did, but I never had that on estimated profit. So it wasn't very accurate. I've also sold the two items from the last episode, episode number seven, the disc PS5 and the Xbox Series S. The PS5 sold for £243 minus the £18 postage, giving us a net profit of £95.09. And, and the Xbox Series S actually sold for nearly £40, meaning we only lost £4.19 from that one. Over to our total profit then, it means that our hourly profit for two and a half hours worth of work in the last episode was £36 an hour. This column is, uh, is pretty cool because it really highlights how much profit you could make if I was doing this all day every day. Meaning that we now stand on a total actual profit of £185.32 whereas our estimated was £177.75. So we're doing good. But that could all be turned on its head today, couldn't it? As we know, with Joey Does Tech. Now, a huge shout out to Mumbin for sponsoring today's video. I've been using their wired label thermal printer for years now. And when they reached out to me and said, would you like to upgrade to the Bluetooth one? I said, how on earth can I resist? The Munbin 130B thermal label printer supports both Bluetooth and wired connections, suitable for either printing directly from your phone or your PC and Mac. I personally use this printer directly for printing my labels on eBay. However, it can be used with any other website such as Etsy, Shopify, Amazon, the list goes on. Printing a shipping label couldn't be easier. Hit the print button, select the Munbin printer, and print. Download the Munbin print app on your device and simply connect it to the printer. It finds it automatically and the setup is hassle free. Choose from thousands of label templates that you can use, such as a to-do list or Christmas stickers, or even create a custom label on your own through the app. The design features are very user-friendly and simple to use. As for printing on PC, again, this couldn't be easier. Simply plug in the cables, add the printer to your PC and print the labels, or simply go to Munbin's online label printer editor and print the label via Bluetooth from your PC. I've been personally using Munbin for two years and have never had an issue with the quality of the print at any point. If you're interested in purchasing Munbin's thermal label printer, I'll leave a link to that down below. Not to mention that from the 21st of November, there will be a heavily reduced discount on the printer. Thank you to Munbin for sponsoring this video. Now back to the repair. I only paid a whopping £30 for this console. The beauty of it, it is still sealed. These stickers here are the warranty stickers and it's not been opened before. However, can you see what's wrong with the That HDMI port in the middle is not looking good. We'll get a better look under the scope, but it's literally split in half. I actually purchased this directly from a viewer. So Chris, if you're watching, thank you. Now, I think I've only worked on one PS4 with a faulty HDMI on this channel. So this is going to be relatively interesting. And for £30, I actually think this is a steal. Firstly, I need to plug it in and make sure that it goes to a white light because that would be, uh, let's just say, embarrassing if that wasn't the case. Always have to make sure that we test the faulty products first. So let's, uh, let's give this one power and see if it turns on. It does. We have the blue light down the middle lovely jubbly now what i need to see is i need to see this go to a white light and if this goes to a white light it signals that the display will be working obviously if we had a functioning hdmi port these also have hdmi encoders very much like the ps5 and commonly when i used to work at rocket repairs and also i've seen on a bunch of other videos they can fail quite easily this might be a hdmi encoder issue as well as the hdmi port or i'm much hoping for just the HDMI port. We see a white light. That is wicked. I can now take this apart and hopefully get it fixed. Hold down the power button. Wait for the two beeps. All right, now I just need to kind of figure out how to take this apart again. One of those things that, again, because I've not done many of these, I've probably done the one on Joey Does Tech, but when it came to Rocket, I'd say maybe under 10 in total. You can easily forget how to take them apart. So we've got the stick. I think, I think it's one, two, three, four. And very much like the PS5, I'm not going to put these back on. Okay. Okay, screws now. I want to say T8. Turn it upside down. I think that's easier. Yeah. And then just this. Yeah. Here we go. Now we're cooking. Subsequently, because I've only worked on one, I don't actually think I have any donors for this. So hopefully I can put it back together in one piece. And I think we just slippity slide, right? It's this side. Sorry. Those two screws. And then just this just pops off now. I think you get this corner. Yeah. He's still got it. One of those things, I guess, when you learn how to repair the consoles it's like riding a bike i know it's a very cliche term once you've done it a couple of times i'm, I'm not going to speak actually <laughs> because i'm fully aware that i could really mess this up this is a really clean console as well i'm super happy with this purchase really really happy 
safe to say as well that my knowledge when it comes to PS4s is not great at all. And then I think we just have this little, I think this is the fan connector. Are we done? Are we good? Oh no, I need to take out the power supply because we have a little screw here. And that comes from the power supply, so we flip it over. Nice! Nice. At least have always been a little bit tricky to get out. Here we go. Then the cable under here. Jubbly. Little antenna. Cable disk drive. Back over now. And then do we just... Wait, what? That screw's still in it? Wait. Oh, there's a black screw down here. Yeah, I think some of the revisions have this screw. Some don't. Okay, just have to remember to actually put that back. Flip over, lift up. There we go. Take out the motherboard. So simple. I really do like this design. I wish I had worked more on them, to be honest, when they were kind of back in their prime. But I wasn't really into electronic repair. Same as the, uh, the Xbox One S when they first originally came out. Take off the thermal pasta because we'll get some nice new stuff on there as well. It wasn't too bad, to be honest. It was actually quite liquidy. Let's have a butcher's at this HDMI port. How are the actual pins because i'm going to show you oh yeah all right can you see how they've come through <laughs> they've come through the back of the port here look whoa 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 hopefully we have no trace damage actually now that i'm looking at this and seeing this monstrosity what i'll do is i'm going to take the port off and i'm going to show you the inside of it but i can hear you saying jo joey how are you going to take the port off let me show you my friends we're going to go 480 degrees celsius with an airflow speed of a lovely jubbly 99 percent <laughs> with a sneeze as well because that helps moving the air around underneath the port i think i strained my neck with that sneeze amazing should be able to get this port off any second now oh, another one. oh the timing man there we go doesn't look like we have any rip traces as far as i can see now usually on ps5s what i would do is add solder but i actually need to check the port and make sure it lines up because i would usually just drop the port on however i remember that with the ports that i had when i done the one that i had on this channel it didn't line up so i'm just going to check that now so here i have said port if i line it up does it oh okay uh yeah no okay that might actually line up perfectly all right well in that case we'll go ahead and get the leather solder added let me just show you the actual port itself this is how it looked can you see how it snapped in the middle wow 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 look at that i don't know what happened to this port i've got no idea oh yeah wow come in with our flux just on the ground holes and the pads this method works for me i like using this method feel free to use it as well but this method might also not work for you let's just put some solder here leather solder mixing it with the unleaded there we go and just over these pins just like that beautiful wipe away the excess flux that we have because we don't need it i've also tinned the port itself oh there is an actual fact a bridge here no there's not oh there is one there and one there get off a little bit of flux do you know what i don't know if it's because that those pins look bent yeah, it kind of looks a little bit wobbly here that one this is in in fact a, uh, a brand new port Sure, it'll be fine when we get it on the actual board itself. There we go. Now, a little bit of flux in those areas, but not too much. Don't need to flood the board here. And we're going to operate exactly the same. So, 480 degrees Celsius airflow speed. Oh, drop the port. Airflow speed 99%. Now, we can see the ground holes are glistening. I just need to also make sure that the pads on the board are glistening as, as well. I think they are. I think they're okay. Well, they're going. There we go. Slowly but surely. And now we drop the port, just like that. Now, uh, I can't actually see, if I'm being honest, which I didn't know was going to be a thing. Uh, I can't see the pins at the back. Oh, wait, the port's dropping. Maybe that's why. Okay, let's give it a little bit of a shuffle around. See if we can just secure those contacts. That looks pretty good to me. All right, just shuffle it a bit more. There we go. Come off that heap. Make sure it's nice and flat to the board. And just hold it. Hold it. And now we can see that solder solidifying. Remove tweezers. Just take a cotton swab. I've moved the board. We can take a cotton swab now and get rid of the excess flux that we have. I wonder if the ground holes are okay as well and whether that solder has actually gone up the leg of the HDMI port. Because that's what I kind of look for. It's not worst case scenario if it doesn't. It just, to me, kind of symbolizes successful port change so how are all of the pins are they okay yeah they look wicked really really good really nice connections to the pads that are actually on the board lovely what about the sides uh i can see the solder going up 
maybe not as much as I'd like. Let me check this side as well. Yeah, I mean it looks okay. Let me check the back. We have big blobs because usually big blobs is a sign that you've got the uh, you've got the legs coming through the board and they're surrounded by solder, which is good enough for me. However, what I will do is just go over them with an iron and make sure they're okay. Do we have our first fix and first profit of the day? I will just quickly go around the um, HDMI. Or do we suck? And is it going to be maybe a uh, faulty HDMI chip? And it's pretty good on the back. And again, on the front, we're all gravy. There are definitely some tests I could do in diode mode, etc., to see if there is going to be an issue with the HDMI chip. But what I'm actually more tempted to do is just plug it in and see what happens. As always, I'll put some new thermal pasta on as well, which will be an absolute waste if this doesn't work because I'll need to put some more on. I think we're going to be okay. I've got faith put back together, as far as I'm aware, uh, enough to test. Power cable in, push in the actual power button. Now, oof, okay. We get the light, that's good. Going to wait for this to turn to a white light before I then switch over the scenes. If this just pulses blue, uh, I've messed something up, which would be hard to believe because I've just changed out the... Uh, the HDMI port, but you never know. There we go. <laughs> My heart did stop a little bit. Let's see. Um, again, you guys know my monitor. Oh, okay. Wow. Yes. There we go. I was going to say it would take a little bit of time, but um, but that's worked just like that very quickly. Nice. There we go. HTCP disabled, and we now have a fully working PlayStation 4. I just need to get that reset, and uh, and that's up and running and working. What a lovely little fix. This can be great money if you offer repairs as a service. I think I could easily get that process down to around about 30 minutes or so. Depending on your area, etc. If you could then charge £60 for that repair, it would be a very, very good earner. I don't know how much it's going to sell for, but I think it's going to make a cushy little profit. Should we move on to item number two? Is this going to make or break us entirely? Let's find out. Actually, before we go to the next one, if you are interested in selling me a device, please use the Google form down below. At the moment, it's UK only. Now, can you look me in the eye and tell me that it would not be a JDT video if I didn't have a PS5? I paid a total of £176 for this console. Now, there's a few scratch marks on it, and it is indeed a digital version, which, as we know, will sell for less than the disc one. So not a massive, massive profit to be made, but a profit to be made nonetheless. And there's a reason why I paid £176 for this console. Can you take a guess why that would be? Yes, that's right. Warranty seal sticker is not tampered with. Basically, will not turn on, just beeps, then shuts off. Faulty spares repairs. And as always, let's give it a test. Yep, we can see as well. Warranty sticker is intact. Things you love to see. All right, plug in some power. Here we go. Right. What happens? I can see it's actually quite dusty, so this one will need a clean. Three, two, one. Beep. Fan spin. Off. Okay. Interesting. Could be a plethora of things. We get another beep. What we could do for this one is UART. That is definitely a possibility, but it's telling us something is wrong and the fan spin does concern me a little bit, but I'm not going to get into that just now. I'm not going to put any bad omens on this console. What I will do as well is I'm going to check the casing and I can't see any signs of drop damage that would maybe uh, ruin the APU. There is a little mark here that shows we could have had a bit of drop, but not a severe one at that. So let's get this uh, let's get this apart and see if we can go two for two today. That'll be wicked. The seller also did state in his listing that this is the third time he relisted this console because people just weren't paying for the item, which really, really sucks. Oh, I did. I did just poke myself in the thumb with the tweezer. We shall survive. Yeah, some dust, dirt and grime in there. Last PS5 I had, uh, one of the reasons why the beep, on, beep off was happening is because of the ribbon cable. Now, I'm just going to rule that out completely. That's my new first thing, I think, to check. I need to plug the fan in, though, to see what's actually going on. No, that is not the culprit this time, because the fan stops. Nothing seems to be ridiculously obvious looking at this, which is, um, is kind of nice, because when you see explosion marks, that is not... A good sign. Now, before I actually take the board out, I'm just going to check for a few voltages just to make sure we're all good. AKA, I call this the make or break phase. Something easy or something hard. Let's just ground that. Plug our power in would help, definitely. Do we have 5 volts standby? We do. Do we have 3.3? We have 3.3. Do we have something here when we go to push power on? Yeah, 2.5. Nice. All right, basic, basic stuff done. Let's try with just a few pokey tests. Continuity mode. To see if we've got any obvious shorts. Ah, oh, 
right off. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's 44. Oh, I thought it was going to be something there. Wait, why is that there? And now the short is gone. Okay, maybe just some leftover current or something. I thought I found it straight away. I was going to say that's ridiculous. The first place that I probed. Here we're going to have 49 because that's SSD. We usually get 49 ohms. That's fine. There seems to be fine. Here. That's where I just check for voltage so we know that area is going to be all right. Fuses. Check on either side of that. Southbridge also seems to be okay as well. Okay, well, like, this is might be a tough one unless we can find something specifically on the other side of the board because, again, we don't have anything jumping out of us making it very obvious. Let's continue taking this apart. How's the liquid metal sitch? Yeah, that kind of that looks okay, to be honest. It's really clean. No dry spots, which is a, <laughs> a rarity. I'm shocked. Continue having a check around on this side of the board. I didn't actually check our 12 volts, but saying that we don't have a shot on the 12 volt rail over to the Wi-Fi IC. Yeah, we get around about 200 ohms on some of them, which is good. I thought this might be a Wi-Fi IC issue, but looks all right. Let's check encoder as well. I'm just going to measure some of the caps that we have. You can't really see that at the moment. 652 ohms, 652. That seems to be okay. We don't have any shorts here. Oh, we might have a bit of a tricky one, which is sometimes nice to have to test the old brain. All fuses checked as well. It seems to be okay. I think we're going to have to go straight with UART for this one. To be honest. Well, I say straight with UART. We've done some basic tests, obviously. But I don't think uh, UART's going to lie to us today. What do I mean by UART? UART is a diagnostics tool that I believe you were able to use on PS4. Um, I've only personally used it on the PS5. But it should jump out and tell us exactly what the issue is. But sometimes it's just not that simple. I hope in this situation it is. So let me hook up UART and see if I get anything to tell me exactly what the fault is. UART's all hooked up and uh, I don't actually know if I have good news here. This is probably the worst code that you can see when doing UART, but I've not refreshed the list. I've literally only just had a look at the last like 10 codes. I'm gonna clear the list now, boot it up and see if I get something different. I've reset the codes and we get a 0014 and we get a 002. What both of those transpire to is a TPM 2.0 chip or power failure. But if I put the other one in, which is the 002, and press enter, exactly the same TPM 2.0 chip or power failure. The TPM chip itself is a chip that is bound to the console. So it's not one that you can uh, take from another console and put onto this one. It's married, unfortunately, to the board. And I believe it has something to do with security. So... I'm going to do a few more basic tests just to make sure it's not a power failure. But usually when it says TPM like that in the past, I've personally not been able to fix it. And I'm unaware of other people who have been able to fix it, which is obviously extremely annoying. Considering as well that I paid the 176 for this because it had the warranty sticker on to get that in UART sucks. I've spent the last 20 minutes just double checking everything and looking over the power rail. And because the board is, it's never been gone into before, it's so clean. I have reason to believe it is just going to be the TPM chip again, which is annoying. However, the game is the game. Let's head on over to Sally's Spectacular Spreadsheet to work out if I've still made a profit or has this now turned into a loss? Okay, so the PS4 and the PS5 Digital have been listed on eBay. I've already put in the cost. We had £30 for the PS4, £176 for the PS5. What I can say is that the PS4 is already sold. It's the next day of this recording. And I thought I'd be able to get £70 for it. But I actually got uh, £70.57 after eBay fees, which gives us a total net profit of £31.58. That's a bit of a win. However, I did cheat a little bit. I did chuck in a controller as well. So I think that would have been maybe £5 less or it might have sold for the same price. I don't know. But it did include a PS4 controller. However, what's not so good is that the uh, the PS5 haven't, hasn't sold yet. And I originally listened it for £170. And it's now I've put it down to £150. So I'm just kind of waiting for it to sell. And if it sells at £150, we're looking at a rough loss of minus 47 pounds and 49 pence. So in terms of estimated profit for number eight, this episode, we're looking at minus 22 pounds 78. Actual profit, I don't know because not both of the items are sold yet. Hours worked, it's gotta be probably one hour in excess of one hour, I'd say. So obviously we'll wait for the actual profit to update. And this is how we're currently looking. Estimated profit, 154, and the actual is 18532, but that's not fully updated just yet. Thank you very much for watching and hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and you enjoyed the content, like the video if you enjoyed this video specifically. And as always, I shall see you in the next one. Peace.